Good morning, everybody. So thanks for staying uh, for my talk. So, so basically, so my talk will be a uh, uh, two part. So first, I want to explain what is HMDB1, what role that HMDB1 plays in sepsis. Then we go to probably one or two examples. We're trying to looking for medicinal herbs that have the potential for the treatment of sepsis. So uh, up to now, I think I do, do not want to go through too much detail about what is sepsis. So basically, it's a systematic inflammatory response syndrome resulting from microbial infection. It's actually it's a very uh, important clinical uh, clinical problem that still kills more than 200,000 people a year in the U.S. alone. The pathogenesis of sepsis is very complex, but it's at least partly due to dysregulated inflammatory responses. So we know the yin immune cells play a very important role in, the, uh, in protection against infection. So in response to infection, the yin immune cells are trying to kill the invading pathogen by ingesting and killing them. If the inf invading pathogen can be effectively eliminated, so excess inflammation can be normally resolved. However, the ineffective elimination of uh, pathogens could lead to systematic inflammatory responses as manifested by overproduction of many cytokines such as the TNF, which is one of the early cytokines, and HMGB1. So basically, we have generated enough data suggesting that HMGB1 is a very important late mediator of experimental sepsis because antibodies against this protein could very effectively rescue mice from lethal experimental sepsis. So what is HMGB1? HMGB1 stands for High Mobility Group Box 1 protein. It's one of protein actually resides normally in the nucleus of cells. Here shows example of actually uh, macrophage cell cultures. If you stain cells with HMDB1 specific antibodies, you only find HMDB1 in the nucleus. So as a nuclear protein, it, can, it has two DNA binding domain. So its normal function is involved uh, binding DNA and regulation of gene expression and uh, transcription. However, in response to many uh, inflammatory stimuli, such as bacterial products, such as uh, LPS, or some early cytokines, such as TNF, or inferon gamma, uh, or, or other stimuli, such as uh, oxidative stress, such as hydrogen peroxide. And HMV1 actually can, could release from macrophages. Here shows one example. Again, normally HMV1 resides in the nucleus of uh, quiescent cells. Once you change the cells with bacterial uh, stimuli, such as lipopolysaccharide, HMV1 could translocate from the nuclear to the cytosol and eventually release to the extracellular space. So an uh, animal model of a sepsis, such as uh, in the toxemia, which injects lethal dose of bactotoxin, or cigar like in the puncture, so the early cells can accumulate further early within hours. However, HMV1 actually did not det uh, was not detected in the circulation at the early time point, but as was detected at a late time point. The kinetics of HMV1 accumulation in the sepsis actually paralyzed with onset animal cells. So once HMDB1 is released by the inner immune cells, it's going to mediate many inflammatory responses. Here are the summaries of a few examples. If you inject recombinant protein to the brain, it could cause actually can imagine could cause fever and cause uh, actually cause release of many excitatory amino acids such as glutamate. If you inject protein into lung tissue, again it causes uh, neutrophil infiltration and the production of cytokines, and lung edema, and injury. And similarly, actual HMV1 could cause the loss of uh, epithelial barrier function when injected into uh, in peritoneal cavity. And actually, if you inject protein to the joint, it also causes uh, inflammation. And the, and the visual conditions, if you challenge the cells with HMV1, you could activate a very wide range of cells, including macrophages, monocytes, endocytial cells, neutrophils, and also could uh, alert and attract various type of cells to the site of infection and injury. 